agree with that. And, and it's hurting hospitals in my district. Now, I represent South Georgia. Keep in mind, there are two Georgias. There's Atlanta and everywhere else. And <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about everywhere else, okay? And I'm talking about a very rural area. And it is really hurting our hospitals. And I've got um, legislation. It is H.R. 4066, the Save Rural Hospitals Act. And it, it establishes an, an area wage adjustment floor for Medicare hospital payments. I just want to ask you if you'll commit to working with us to get this fixed so that we can help rural hospitals. You're familiar with the plight of rural yes. hospitals. You're familiar yes. with how important they are to these, to these communities. And you know that they're struggling. You know a lot of them are closing down. This will help, and we need your help on this, and I just want to get that commitment from you. With the number of facilities that are closing down in rural America, it is alarming. Absolutely, you got my commitment to work with you. We may not agree on every solution, but I am absolutely committed to working with you. Good. I hope you'll look at this legislation. Again, it's H.R. 4066, and we'll it's, it's bipartisan, and it's good legislation that will help us as well. well and if you need any technical assistance on that, please turn to our, our, our team, and we'll be there to help. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to submit this letter from the Tennessee Hospital Association and signed by nine other states, including the state of Georgia, regarding the Medicare hospital area wage index. Without objection. Thank you. Now, Mr. Secretary, I want to ask you about, um, I actually sent you a letter. I led a letter um, about this and had 53 signatures of my colleagues on it. It has to do with um, the president's fiscal year 2023 budget. And once again, it promotes taxpayers funding of abortions by excluding the longstanding bipartisan Hyde Amendment protections that prohibit the use of taxpayer dollars to subsidize abortion services. Are you aware of that? Congressman, uh, I, I'm fully aware of this issue and, uh, and the deeply held beliefs that uh, really reside behind it. Thank you. I, I want the, the, the letter that I sent you and that was signed, as I say, by 53 of my colleagues, who mentioned in there the, uh, our concerns about the Task Force on Re Reproductive Health. I, and you're familiar yeah. with that. I believe that's something Started that was up. implemented, instigated by your office. It absolutely was. Okay. Well, I, you know, that, that was on the 49th anniversary, I believe, of Roe versus Wade, where you announced that you'd be forming this task force with the explicit purpose, as I understand it, of promoting abortion in response to pro-life laws passed by states and increase abortions in foreign countries? Congressman, I have long supported reproductive decisions and privacy under Roe v. Wade. Okay, but, but what about the Hyde Amendment? I, and what, what I'm getting at here, 73% of Americans oppose using their tax dollars to pay for abortions in other countries, 73%. And just recently, in January, a majority of Americans opposed taxpayer funding for any abortions here in America as well. So we're talking about taxpayers' dollars here being used for something that they're opposed to, and that is for, for taking the life of the unborn. And, and, and that's from my perspective. The task force that, that, as I understand it, it formalizes the pro-abortion advocacy at home and abroad that has been, it's already been promoted through HHS. Does this new task force intend to use federal funds to advocate against state laws to protect the unborn? Uh, the purpose of the task force is to make sure that we are uh, enforcing the laws that are in place and protecting people's rights under those laws. Including the Hyde Amendment? It would, any, any law that's in place, we Including would Including sure. the Hyde, that's easy, yes or no. Including the Hyde Amendment. We will enforce and protect uh, the rights of people under all our existing laws. Including the Hyde Amendment, yes. We will. Uh, yeah, okay. You know. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm a pharmacist. I'm not a lawyer. So you can you can use your lawyer talk with me. But I, I it, I'm being pretty clear. We're going to enforce it. Pretty every clear, law. and that includes the Hyde Amendment, which protects the unborn and pro prohibits the use of taxpayers' money for abortion. As I said, we're going to protect every every person's rights under existing law. We're, I'm not excluding any particular laws. I'm just going to make sure I enforce the laws properly. I am obligated to comply with the law. And so if there's a law in place, I'm going to comply with it. Good. And that, that shows us and, and, and tells me how important it is that we make sure that Hyde Amendment rules are, are added into any budget and into any laws, to any, uh, any appropriations that we have. So thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Appreciate your indulgence. And I yield back. Thank you for your questions. Gentleman yields back. I now recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Jeffries, for five minutes. 
Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening to our very distinguished witnesses. Good to see you. I've had the opportunity.